Begay is one of those rare artists that preserves the traditional culture, stories, and gives us a vivid history of the Native American people through his artwork. With over 600 pieces in his collection, Rex shares us a few of those pieces and gives us a glimpse into the Native vision of our relationship with Mother Earth, the universe, all living things, ourselves, and the Creator. I travel throughout the country and uh, I listen. A lot of times I listen to the elders, a lot of times I listen to the people. And I, I grasp at the things that they say. And a lot of times when things are said that I don't go deep into what really is said. I analyze it and then I feel like when it has to come out to the people throughout the world. My name is Rex Begay. I'm from uh, Diné Nation, from Arizona, around the Grand Canyon area but I do live here in Sarasota. I, I, I know my traditions, I am uh, uh, traditional, and uh, I try to say, you know, things that I do, I, everything that I touch, I always ask. We are the largest tribe in the United, Sta in the United States as of today, by full blood. Uh, we cover a lot of Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and, you know, uh, Colorado, and, uh, we have, the, the reason to that is like uh, what we went through, the Holocaust of the uh, imprisonment and everything, we got strengthened by that and today we believe in our culture very strong. I mean, even though a lot of people try to put uh, other different, uh, uh, like a religion into our culture, but uh, you know, we, we respect that. But yet we, we have our culture very strong. So, uh, the painting that I'm doing right now talks about how People from another sort of the country came to our area and they uh, took us in prison and uh, we stayed there for years and basically this is on their way home. And uh, a lot of times I'll put like the universe into it. It talks about Father Sky, how uh, we should care for, for the sky, for the earth, for ourselves. Uh, you know, this way we, we, we understand a lot, a lot of things that, that's given to us. So. Like I always say, the greatest gift that's given to us is the earth. And if we take care of it, we take care of ourselves. Sometimes uh, certain tribes will come to me and explain different things, like, uh, or say something about it. And this was created by um, an idea of, of how they felt or how we feel. And it's called the birth. And when I did this is uh, when we were taught, they say when we're inside a womb, we know everything that there is in life. We grasp all the, uh, the ceremonials and everything. That's when we're inside. And the thing is, when we're being born, when we come out, everything is shut out from us. So we have to relearn everything. And it's a shame that by the time when we get old, that's when we grasp a little bit of what we knew from the inside. So that's why you got the eagle feather that surrounds the baby. And uh, you got the four different colors of the different nations that the, the people that put out. Painting like the spirit warrior or spirit wind, that talks about a time when people didn't understand, uh, like uh, we didn't know what, what the horse was. Basically a lot of the, even though we had horses, uh, we use it for food. So, but when we, when the Spaniard came, we saw them riding the horses. And that's when the native people got very close to the horse. And they start riding it and working off it and everything. And they honor it with a lot of respect. And they never misused it or mis, uh, uh, beat it or anything like that. So they're, they're very close. Um, and the same area where I did this is called um, Spirit Warrior. You know, a lot of times, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, warrior, what is a warrior? Well, to us, a warrior is like we're supposed to be the warriors of the earth. 
meaning that we're supposed to be the caretakers of the earth. Instead, people are saying warrior like going to wars and everything. And that's not a warrior. But as a warrior, we're supposed to be, you know, taking care of ourselves, our, our livelihoods, our, our, the earth itself, taking care of it and everything. And then this one, I had a vision two years before I did this. And it's of a piece where uh, it was up in the Cherokee uh, uh, reservation up into the uh, North Carolina uh, Smoky Mountains. And I kept, it kept coming back to me. And I had to go to the people. And I had to sit down with the people and ask them, why do I have these visions? Why is this so strong? So they sat me down. And they told me about the spider, spider woman, where grandmother spider brought light back to the people. And these are the little people that live through the forest. This little creature said, I'll go and take, I'll bring back the light. So they finally agreed that, okay, we'll let her. So she made this little pot, they said. And she wear herself through the universe and got to the sun, got part of that sun. And this is where she's bringing it back, where there's light to the people. The other thing that they say is that when they brought light back to the people, they they didn't do what they needed to do, like ceremonials or thank, uh, thanking the earth or thanking the sky or for anything. So what they brought back from the other side of the part of the earth is what it was on the other side. They say there was selfishness, uh, greed, and everything else that went along with that. So they brought that back over to here, and that's where we, that's why that's in the way of the world that we live in today. Mm -hmm.